Is there anything quite like Carolina and Duke? Not that I've ever seen. It's the most intense rivalry I think there is in sports. And uh, tonight in Cameron Indoor, we saw it in, in its full, full glory because it was not looking good for the home team, at least initially. Nolan Smith, number five, number 21, ranked Carolina. There's Harrison Barnes, and here's a young man from Iowa that, frankly, Duke thought they were going to get. See the young guy sitting behind the bench in the Duke shirt? That's Harrison Barnes. He went on Skype, said, I'm going to Carolina. That didn't turn out too bad for Duke in the end. They got a kid named Austin Rivers. That's neither here nor there. Early on, Barnes, he can do that, knocks it down, and early on it's seven to nothing. But really it was it was the big guys, Jay, that, that were setting the pace early on. Well, North Carolina's inside guys were great rim protectors in the first half, and Carolina got in, out in transition. And that's really their game, their primary break, then their secondary break. They also did a terrific job on the offensive glass getting second shots. T Tyler Zeller is an outstanding player, and John Henson, this is a great up and under move. That was outstanding. And for old guys like like you and me, Jay, we remember Stretch Armstrong. He's like that. He's got <laughs> arms for days. Here's here's the freshman Henson in transition. Really looked like he was losing it the whole way. And the smart thing, let's throw it up, see if we get a call, bucket, and one. Well, Harrison Barnes is a, a truly a great young player, and he's starting to play like we expected. 23 points per game over his last three coming in. Second half, here comes Duke. They're down 14 at the half, but then it's Nolan Smith, and then Seth Curry feels it, and then Smith. This he's really turned into a special player at Duke. Jay. Well, he's a player of the year candidate. 34 points in this game. He's leading the. ACC and scoring and assists, but Seth Curry was the guy that really got it going in the second half. Wound up with 22 points. I think without him, Duke's not in a position to win. Younger brother Steph here, he almost jumps, puts it on the deck, creates the space, hits that. There's his mom, and she's loving life as the lead has been erased and then a backdoor cut and a great kick and this is what Duke's so dangerous because even the big guys can bury three. Yeah they can spread the floor they can park shooters and Nolan Smith not only in transition but when he comes off a high ball screen I don't think there's anybody better in college basketball coming off a of pick and roll. You saw the Ryan Kelly three you saw the Nolan Smith bucket it's a four point game then Nolan Smith with another shot that finds the bottom and it's all happy in Cameron but Carolina's game they hang around they hang around and here off the trap Carolina trying to turn something into a transition points. And you've got Barnes with a pretty good look up top. That's not a bad shot. But this is really the story for Carolina in the second half. They couldn't make an open look, or so it seemed. Then Zeller down low. Those all went in the first half. That one goes begging. So it's a four-point lead at this point. And then after some free throws, it's a, down to a five, up to a five-point lead, I should say. Zeller down low. Creates space. Duke doesn't want to foul. Then after a timeout, a great inbounds play here as Smith will ultimately get loose. Can't let that happen. Yeah, you just go long. You're trying to get the make Duke catch the ball coming toward the basketball, but when they're guarding you between the ball and your man, you can just go long and throw that pass. Now you saw some shots in there of a guy in a blue striped shirt waving a towel named Kyrie Irving, a talented freshman, and Duke doesn't have him at their disposal, but it's really a, clearly a tale of two halves. You see that Duke in the second half shot much better, and uh, the inside advantage that Carolina enjoyed in the first half went away. Again, Jay, this is a rivalry you're familiar with playing for Coach K. It's, it's, it's one of a zillion wins for Coach K. He's won the championship four times. But what does a game like this mean when you can turn it on in the second half and beat your most your most uh, bitter rival? Well, I, I, rivalry aside, I think answering the bell in the second half and playing as well as they did gives them a lot of confidence. You know, it's still a team that's trying to find out exactly who they are. First eight games, they had Kyrie Irving and expected to be a totally different team. And now they're still trying to figure it out. They've got guys that are emerging in different roles. They don't know who their third scorer is going to be on a night where Kyle Singler did not have a great scoring game. I think he only wound up with about 10 points. He didn't make the highlight. Yeah, to have, uh, yeah, geez, what, what an insult. <laughs> uh, but, but to have a guy like St uh, Seth Curry step forward, it, it's been a different guy in most games. Mm -hmm. And Curry was the guy in this ball game with the 22 points. Without him, they're not in a position to win. But North Carolina, they're back to being the Carolina we remember. Uh, the, the, having their point guard, Kendall Marshall, now the lefty freshman, he has made them a totally different team. Much better in transition, much more efficient offensively. That team is going to be really good by the end of the year. I saw an interesting stat coming in that uh, all time, 38 times they have gotten together when both teams were ranked. Only half the team, half the time has the higher ranked team actually won the game. Is that right? So Duke, so Duke we, we can say is the better team of the two. What's the gap like now between them and Carolina? Well, I'm not sure you can necessarily say that. I think they probably are a little bit better, but Duke won at home. They've still got to go to Chapel Hill and play in the Dean Smith Center. Uh, I think North Carolina is going to get better. Duke's inside game has to improve. You know, they, I think Duke's got better guards. They've got older guards, and they've got uh, two seniors in Smith and Singler that are as, as good at their positions as anybody in the country. And Nolan Smith's having a player of the year season. I mean, he's been he's not been good. He's been magnificent. 
magnificent. Uh, so I, th I do think their inside guys have to be better. North Carolina's inside guys are very, very good. As they get stronger, I think that's the next step for them is to be able to go through contact and finish plays. But I think North Carolina is proving to be, they're a, t they're a top 15 team, and I think we'll get better as the season goes along. Uh, can we all agree this is a bucket list kind of thing? Before I leave this earth, I got to see one of these games in person, right? Oh, yeah. you should. He and, played it, and I've just seen it. You, need, which to, site, you need to see it. If I can only go to one, which site? Cameron. Yeah, you probably go to Cameron, but they're both great. All right. If you could go to Carmichael, the way that where they used to play it, <laughs> that would be the place oh, to go. God, we're so old. It's that sad. place is awesome.